Hey guys, how are you today? I'm having a great time. Uh, I've been running around Los Angeles. This is a holiday and I'm going to share some things with you that maybe, well, let's just say they're rare in my shed. Now, let's start off with what I did this morning and um, let's go here. You know that I'm very particular about when it comes to real guitars. Um, we've got license plate guitars, cigar box guitars, coffee can guitars. But when it comes to guitars, I'm very, very particular about, where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer right here? About these things, F holes. Yeah, that's what an F hole is. So, but there's something else that has F holes that you never see in my shop. Well, not never. It's always there. There's one up there somewhere. You see it in the background there? And that is a violin. Don't look too close at that. A violin. I know nothing about violins. Yet, this morning, through some odd set of circumstances, I actually had a conversation with a renowned violin. I don't say that word very often. Renowned violinist who has ties to both Bob Dylan and Muddy Waters. Do the math and see if you can figure that one out. Anyway, <laughs> had a great morning with, uh, with that person. Learned a lot about the music industry that is huge outside of my shed. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about, something you never, ever, ever, except one time, see in my shed, and that is a headstock that is slotted. Now, it's not like I don't build necks here. We build start to finish necks. Um, but this is an odd creature for me. I don't think I've ever gotten used to um, the tuners. They seem vulnerable to me. Face it, my guitars get beat up. They get thrown around, kicked down. Uh, when you start getting into this stuff, the first thing that enters into my brain is national. Yeah. So, I can't really think of other than one time that I've actually had a guitar with a slotted headstock. And you know it. It was the episode, What's in the Case, comrade, about this Russian guitar that I just happened to buy on the same day that I filed my election papers for the school board. That is a story in, its, of, in and of itself, and I will give you a link to it right up there right about now if you care to know about this guitar that was made in May 1973 in the Soviet Union. But it has a slotted headstock and... Um, these tuners that seem just really vulnerable to me. Maybe I just don't understand that, but I'll tell you what, there is someone who understands them very well, as well as the expensive instruments that they tend to go with. Acoustic guitars, flat tops, I don't do many of those in here, and the ones I have did it, done, do, are horrendous and basically an embarrassment to uh, YouTube luthier credentials. I'll give you an example right up there, right about now. Anyway, as the title says, we are going to spend a minute with Fred on a guitar that has a slotted headstock. You've seen this one before. Um, it was in an episode called A Minute with Fred, Yard Sale Guitar, and then what is this guitar worth? It's the same guitar. It's old. It's very valuable, and its provenance makes it even more valuable. So, without further ado, let's go visit Fred in his shed and see what he's up to with that old Martin guitar with the slotted headstock. Let's go. Okay, so... Here's what's happening. Um, I've got this beautiful guitar of Joni Mitchell's. And um, it's been in storage for, oh, God only knows, maybe 30 or 40 years. 
But what had happened is over the years, this is a 20s uh, 0042 Martin, very beautiful. Beautiful inlay, you know, the difference between a 42 and a 45 would be that a 42 has the abalone art inlay along the edges of the fingerboard and the, the edges of the guitar. Whereas the 1945 version would have it on every 90 degree edge. Anyway, they were braced. These guitars were braced two different ways. One was for what they called at that time gut strings because that's what the top three strings were made of only, which was gut. The bottom three strings were uh, gut wrapped with uh, uh, silver wire. Now, what happens is, over the years, somebody got to this guitar and noticed that the bracing was for gut strings. Now we call them nylon strings. Now, you know, it's the old story of better being the opponent of good. This guy, somewhere along the line, had decided he was going to put nylon string guitar pegs on an all original 0042. So he drilled out the holes in the headstock. Very big, I don't know if you could see it, but you can see how much bigger they are. And uh, he put on nylon string pegs. Well, it was ludicrous because they're, you know, number one, they didn't need to be done. And, um, They weren't beautiful like the originals. These are like the originals made by Waverly. And uh, so now here's the question. What do we do? The first thing we have to do is we have to dowel the old bag holes and we've got to drill the new bag holes. Well, we could do it any number of ways, but this gadget really does the job. It's made specifically for that purpose. So on one side of the get stock, it would go that way. On the other side of that stock, it would go that way. So now what do we do? Okay, we've doweled it. This is all a, uh, uh, this is solid through here, solid through here, solid through there. Now, how do we drill it out? Well, we put on this doweling jig. And we put on a cl clamp. And then we drill it out. And when we drill it out, we have to, like, uh, figure out what the depth is when we take this thickness into account, etc. Because we, you know, we, we, we don't want to drill any further into the center part than is needed. So, we do that. Yeah, it looks really good. So, anyway, that's the story, and I'm going to stick to it.
we learn? Well, we learned number one that slotted headstocks don't do anything for my horrendous guitar playing. But in reality, um, when Fred tells you that someone took an old Martin back in the old days, maybe somebody didn't think it was worth that much. Of course, they didn't have um, 80, 90, 100 years of hindsight. Yeah, we're getting up on 100 years on the guitar he was working on. Or little did they know whose guitar it would become, but they went from cat gut strings or whatever they had back then to put steel strings on it. And now, fortunately, Fred has the skill set to put it back to the way it was. So I'm going to add that episode into the playlist, A Minute with Fred. Anytime you want to go down a productive rat hole without a bunch of my gibberish, you're going to want to check that playlist out with a link right up there right about now. As always, I enjoy spending time with Fred. I hunted Fred down because my guitars might look like they come out of a yard sale, and most of them did, but the important part about what I do is when you send the stuff out and it spends night after night in a dive bar by somebody playing with somebody playing trash blues, they've got to be durable and they also have to be able to play. So thank you, Fred, uh, for your guidance there and the time we get to spend with you. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. And we're going to get back on this one very soon. See you then.